It seems like nowadays, if you're deep enough in open source, you can't really avoid the VC money coming in. It's been like that for a bit now. And I know this has resulted in a ton of skepticism around projects like Next.js, around projects like Laravel, and around all these other things being built largely with VC money. I have some either good or bad news we'll talk about as we get there, because there's a new thing that has been VC funded. And it's a thing that has often been held as the opposition to stuff like everything I just talked about. That thing? is Veet. Yes, believe it or not, Evan Yu, the creator of Vue, has raised money, not for Vue, but for the build tools he is creating around Vue and the rest of the web ecosystem. This is a huge change and we have a ton to talk about here. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. Y'all already know Stack Blitz, but they just dropped something incredible. I am so hyped to show you guys Bolt.new. I could talk a lot about it, but let's just use it. Start a blog with a post about Veet's new fundraise. Use React and Vite. What's really cool here is it's not just another code gen tool that gives you a command to run or copy paste. This is actual code in an actual IDE that you can edit and play with because it's stack blitz. Of course it is. You can also make changes and then prompt further and it's aware of the things that you've changed and you can even deploy straight from chat. Look at that. Vite secures new funding to accelerate development. It wrote a whole fake blog post. It made all of the interactions. It didn't make the other pages, but you can prompt it to do that. But let's deploy it. And look at that. Building and deploying straight to Netlify. Tell me that's not cool. We got an actual deployment up all from just that. Huge thanks to Stackblitz for sponsoring. Go check out Bolt.new. Announcing Void Zero Dev, company building the next generation unified tool chain for JavaScript. We are the creators and core contributors of Vite, Vitest, Rolldown, and OXC, and we will unite these projects under a coherent vision to power the next generation of web applications. We have raised $4.6 million in seed funding led by Excel. Read more in the blog post below. For what it's worth, Excel is the lead investor in the most recent round for Vercel. I believe they're also the lead for Laravel. I'm almost positive about that. Now they're the lead for Void Zero Dev. Interesting stuff. I might know of a few other places that they're the lead for too that y'all might be surprised to hear about in the near future. More coming soon. Before we go too far into that, I'm gonna drop one of my hot takes because just yesterday, Primogen raised a totally fair concern here, which is that he's increasingly skeptical of open source that is directly tied with VC. I hear it, but I don't fully agree. I think all open source has things worth considering when we talk about how they are funded and what makes them exist over time. A hobby project, could have the person just get bored and go work on other things. Like Vue, for example, now that Evan Yu is working on something else that is well-funded and what he's working on before with Vue isn't, I would expect his focus on Vue to go down. And if you're a big fang company like Microsoft or Facebook or something, the team that's working on that open source project that you like might get laid off. So if you're consuming even something as big and important as React, the React team has to fight internally to convince Meta that they are worth funding and that they are worth giving the resources that they need to exist. And they got hit with layoffs and they had to fight to keep the most important people and eventually get the ones that got laid off back because of how important they all were. But the harsh reality of being at these big companies is that the open source projects that we might be consuming from them, those are just financial risks to the business. And as soon as they decide to crack down, the cost of it being out in open source is probably greater than the value it brings them. At any point, that can go away. And while a VC-backed startup might crack down to make more money on their project, they might fail outright and go away. At the very least, there is a tie between its success in the open source world and, importantly, their financial success. And in all of these other cases, the financial success of the business and the long-term success of the open source project are not tied together. That's weird. And for the best hobby projects, those people have to make money somewhere else. Even donations is not enough as a motivator. The biggest open source projects don't have enough donations to sustain a real team. Fang backed, as I elaborated on, does not have any guarantee of existing tomorrow. But with VC backed companies, the risk of them failing might be higher, but the risk of them getting deleted while being successful is a lot lower. Successful projects vanishing is only possible with the top two. Successful projects changing their operations or becoming more expensive that can be a thing. So personally, I don't see VC backed as significantly worse than the other models. I see them as beneficial and also negative in different ways. Also, no shitty crypto startup is gonna magically fix this and I'm tired of people pretending it will. 
a good point for mine. You probably don't have to worry too much about people who have done it for a decade under every model and they just keep doing it. This is a phenomenal segue to go right in to what we're talking about today. Announcing Void Zero, next generation tool chain for JavaScript. TLDR, I have founded Void Zero Incorporated, a company dedicated to building an open source, high performance and unified developer tool chain for the JavaScript ecosystem. We have raised 4.6 million in seed funding led by Excel. This feels a little familiar to me. Together, we are announcing we've raised 4.5 million in seed funding led by A Capital Ventures and OSS Capital. The promise here, Rome is an end-to-end -end development tool chain. <laughs> also, by the way, written in Rust, unified development tool chain raised 4.6 million. End-to-end -end development tool chain raised 4.5 million. How hilarious is that? I didn't even realize how weirdly similar these were until now. Yeah. And for what it's worth, you didn't already know, Rome failed hard, hard, and has been forked into a project called Biome that one of the people who worked at Rome has been working really hard to maintain since, and it's getting somewhere now. The linter is in a really good state, and I know people moving off of Prettier and off of ESLint in favor of Biome now, which is cool to see, but that's just the linter. All the other parts just kind of got given up on. But uh, I will say Evan's a lot further along. To be fair, Sebastian was the creator of Babel and Yarn. He was deep in the weeds. He knew better than most how to potentially do things right. He just lost motivation and gave up. Evan is at the peak of his motivation. So I'm curious to see, despite the really rough history these moves have had, I'm curious to see where this goes. And at least the money came in after it worked, not before. 15 years ago, when I started building apps with JavaScript, it was mostly a browser-based scripting language. Today, it's evolved to the most widely used language in the world, powering everything from web and mobile apps to game development and even the internet of things. Over the years, many excellent tools have emerged to address the increasing scale and complexity of JavaScript applications. However, the ecosystem has always been fragmented. Every application relies on a myriad of third-party dependencies, and configuring them to work together remains one of the most daunting tasks in the development cycle. One of my first big web dev tasks was moving a bunch of Twitch stuff to the newest version of Webpack. It's like, I think I did Webpack 2 to 4. Yeah, I've been to hell and back. And I think it's part of why I'm so tolerant of these things. I started in such a spicy area. As the author of one of the most widely used front-end frameworks, I've spent significant effort researching every layer of the JavaScript tooling stack, assembling hundreds of dependencies and designing complex abstractions on top of them. The goal is always to give end users a cohesive out-of-the-box development experience. Those efforts eventually led to the creation of Vite in 2020. And of course, the classic XKCD, there are too many standards, solution needs to be one to solve everyone's use case. Yep. Fast forward four years, Vite is now one of the most popular build tools for web dev with over 15 million downloads a week and a vast ecosystem. In addition to being the go-to choice for single page apps built with React and Vue, Vite's also powering meta frameworks like Remix, Nuxt, Astro, SvelteKit, SolidStart, Quick, Redwood, and more. It has clearly established itself as the shared infrastructure layer for the next generation of web frameworks. And yes, it has only been four years. I still remember when Evan first tweeted, hey, I think I got Vite working for React can someone who's a React dev try this out? And I was one of the first people to try it way, way back. The trust the community has placed in Vite made me reflect deeply on its future. While Vite has greatly improved the high level developer experience internally, it still relies on various dependencies with abstractions and workarounds to smooth over inconsistencies. Performance wise, it remains bottlenecked by duplicated parsing and serialization costs across different tools and can't fully leverage native tooling like ESBuild due to feature constraints and limited customizability. We started designing a new bundler, Rolldown, tailored for Vite's needs. If you're not familiar with Rolldown, it is a full rewrite of Rollup, which is Rich Harris's JavaScript bundler that is what Vite uses for its production bundles. They're trying to rewrite it in Rust so they can use the same bundler for dev and prod. Because right now with Vite, you use ES build and dev and you use Rollup and prod, which sucks. And they're trying to move away from that with Rolldown. But as I ventured deeper into the layers beneath the bundler, I came to the realization that the challenges Vite is facing are a reflection of the JS ecosystem at large, fragmentation, incompatibilities, and inefficiency. To fundamentally change this, a unified tool chain is needed. Imagine a tool chain that is unified, using the same ASTs, resolvers, and module interop for all tasks, eliminating inconsistencies and reducing redundant parsing costs. High performance, it's written in a compiled to native language designed from the ground up for speed with maximum parallelization and low overhead JS plugin support. The performance budget unlocks more ambitious features that improve not only developer experience, but the end user experience as well. Interesting. If you're not familiar with AST, it's abstract syntax tree. It's a generic representation of what your code does. So it's a way to go through the code, abstract it, and like read each line and do things to it. It's how bundlers and tools like that 
work to turn the code you're writing into code that actually works in the browser. Because the code you're writing, especially with stuff like JSX, that's not code that just works in the browser. And the AST is how your code is parsed to then create that output. It's also about the syntax specifically, not just the semantics. Good call out. Again, with imagining this modern perfect tool chain, it also has to be composable, where each component of the tool chain is independently consumable, offering building blocks for advanced customization and runtime agnostic, not tied to any specific JS runtime, delivering the same dev experience across all environments. And nowadays there's a lot between Bun, Dino, all the winter CG stuff, browsers, workers, Node. There's a lot of places to run your JavaScript now. Such a tool chain will not only enhance Vite, but also drive significant improvements throughout the whole JS ecosystem. This is an ambitious vision, and achieving it requires a full-time, dedicated team, something that wasn't possible under the independent sustainability model of my past projects. This is why Void Zero was founded. I'm excited to announce that we've raised $4.6 million in seed funding to pursue this vision. Our seed round was led by Excel, with participants from Amplify Partners, Press and Warner Ventures, who uh, Tim Press and Warner was the original, one of the original founders of GitHub, and is also the guy who made Redwood, which is one of the earliest full stack React frameworks. BGC, I am offended that all my homies got in this list and he didn't hit me up. I would have absolutely thrown a check in. Next time. The progress so far. Over the past year, we've built a team with deep expertise. Oh, good call out that uh, TPW also put money into Rome. He really wants this. <laughs> Over the past year, we've built a team with deep expertise in JS tooling, including the creators and core contributors to widely adopted open source projects like Vite, Vitest, OXC, and also former contributors to RSPAC. Interesting. RSPAC might, be, might have a real challenger now, which is crazy because it's so far along. We've been hard at work developing the foundational elements of our envisioned toolchain. In addition to ongoing improvements to Vite, we've also delivered the following. The fastest and most spec compliant JS parser, the OXC parser, which is three times faster than SWC. The fastest node compatible resolver, which is OXC resolver, 28 times faster than enhanced resolve. The fastest TypeScript and JSX transformer, which is four times faster than SWC. This is funny because Vue doesn't even use JSX, but they made the fastest solution to it. The fastest linter, OXLint which is up to 100 times faster than ESLint. The most feature-complete test runner for web applications, the test. Ooh, is AntFu working for them? Fu being part of the team makes me even more excited. He's insanely talented and has deserved the opportunity to work on this stuff full-time for a while. Hype. The fastest bundler, Rolldown, which is built on top of OXC, is faster than ESBuild and all other Rust bundlers. I want to see the benchmarks. He didn't say a number for that one, which has me sus. Okay, it's quite a bit faster, actually. I would have bragged about that. It takes about a third as long as the RS build equivalent and even shorter than the farm equivalent. That's very interesting. Here, this one's a huge gap. 500 milliseconds versus four seconds. Okay, I am curious what is making it alpha and what shortcuts they're taking right now because the gap here is insane. Very exciting though. While it's still early days, our open source projects are already being used by some of the world's leading engineering teams, including those at OpenAI, like the ChatGPT web client team, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Visa, Shopify, Cloudflare, Atlassian, Reddit, Hugging Face Linear, and many more. To be fair, a lot of them are using Vite, is how they snuck in here. So like OpenAI just moved to Remix, and Remix is using Vite, so that's how they can claim that. But it is fair that Vite is being used by everyone right now. If I was at Twitch right now, I would be working hard to port the Twitch site to Vite if it hasn't already been ported by the team there. And it probably, honestly, decent chance it has. The only catch with Vite is it didn't handle shitloads of things as well because it loads in dev everything as its own JS file because it doesn't bundle them. It just compiles them to browser-friendly JS. And when you're loading like 5,000 modules in the browser, it starts to fall apart. So that might make a code base the size of Twitch hard, but I'd be curious. And yeah, that all said, like I would be using Vite as much as I could somewhere like Twitch. And it's not surprising all these companies are using it. So what's next? Our primary goal for the coming months is to stabilize Rolldown and make it the unified bundler for Vite in both dev and prod. We've already made great progress and are aiming for an alpha release of Rolldown powered by Vite later this year. In 2025, we will continue to complete the other planned features of OXC, like minification and formatting, and gradually migrate the entire Vite ecosystem to be powered by Rolldown and OXC. We will work closely with the ecosystem partners and stakeholders to ensure a smooth transition for end users. What's really exciting about this part is right now, as fast as Vite is, it is not being used 
as a like like Vite's speed isn't felt when you're building your production site because the speed is in dev mode when it uses ES build. But as soon as you're building for prod, you're back to using roll up, which is slow. And the dream of like 15 second or less build times for decent sized applications isn't real yet for any real project. And once this ships, we will go from almost no big framework heavy projects being able to compile fast and prod to most of them that aren't built on top of Webpack can. And TurboPack's going for a similar thing here, but they only got dev mode working recently and production builds are a far off goal. If they're planning on having roll down powering production builds by the end of the year, oof, that's going to be a huge change. Everything with open source will remain open source. On top of our open source projects, we'll offer an end-to-end -end JS toolchain specifically designed to meet the scale and security requirements of enterprise environments. Interesting. So they're going to make a separate closed source tooling solution for enterprise companies to meet their security and scale requirements. Very interesting. I have no idea in the slightest what that's going to look like. Interesting calls in the FAQ here. The Vite and Vitest's team-based governance remains the same as before. Both core teams include members employed by multiple different organizations like Void Zero, StackBlitz, Nux Labs, and Astro. Void Zero Inc. employees and sponsors multiple core contributors to both Vite and Vitest. Void Zero Inc. holds the copyrights, funds the development, and controls the direction of both OXC and Rolldown. Interesting. So Vite and Vitest are separate with their own, like, separate board. But Void's ownership of Ox and Rolldown, I, I hate that this feels familiar to the fucking WordPress I've been dealing with recently. Yeah. Anyways, I don't think it's bad to be clear. It's just reminiscent of something that was very bad. What about Vue? Void Zero as a business entity is entirely separate from Vue. Vue will continue as an independent project, but will receive first class support for the new tooling stuff developed by Void Zero. Why Ox and not SWC? SWC, if you're not familiar, by the way, is the speedy web compiler. It was created by Katie Dev, uh, Donnie, who works at Vercel now as a faster way to compile your TypeScript files into JS that runs in the browser. It is now one of the core parts of Turbo and like the Vercel ecosystem. And it's written in Rust. It's really fast. It's really good. But it's built deeply into Turbo Pack at this point. And I can see why they would want to do their own thing. We need a bundler that's extremely fast, well-suited for application bundling, and fully compatible with Vite's plugin ecosystem. This is discussed in detail in the Rolldown docs. Building Rolldown on top of Aux also unlocks the ability to perform more AST-related tasks in parallel during the bundling phase. For example, emitting and bundling a DTS with isolated declarations true. Fair point. So to be clear for those who are confused, turning your TypeScript and React, like TSX code, all your imports and all of that, into JS that runs in the browser is one challenge. Bundling it into the right files based on the right routes is a separate challenge. You need to do both. So like, before you bundle your code, you need to be able to turn it into something the browser runs, and then the bundler grabs all of that new code and makes it the right formats and the right bundles for the browser. And if those two are built together in lockstep, you can share work that's done by one instead of having to repeat the work on each part. And why will this be different from previous attempts to create a unified JS toolchain? The biggest challenge of a unified toolchain is the zero to one problem. It needs to gain critical mass for exponential adoption to justify continued development, but it is hard to cross the chasm before it actually fulfills the vision. Void Zero does not have this problem because Vite's already the fastest growing toolchain in the JS ecosystem. That's a very fair point, actually, in contrast to Rome, where no one was using it yet. Vite as the entry point for them to do this stuff actually makes a ton of sense. Apparently the website is beautiful. I want to see it. Okay. Yeah, they're doing the thing that like, I, I don't know if Mux was the first, but they were the ones that I saw initially doing the more industrial site design. I know Vercel's done it too. Like see these hard edges and all the blocks now. Everyone finally got tired of the linear site. Took long enough for us to all stop cloning linear and make something a little different. But this new almost like industrial design, like I think I've heard it called Brutalist before. It's pretty. Next generation tooling for TypeScript for frameworks, for all these other things. Cool. Projects, Vite, Vitest, Rolldown, Aux, the mission. We get it. They're counting the total GitHub stars across everything. This was straight from the blog post. Still beautiful. Oh, I'm sad I don't get to be on this list now. Evan, it's not too late. I'll throw a check in. Apparently the Vite site got an overhaul too. Ooh, yeah, it did. This is stunning. Okay. 
it's lagging a bunch on my computer. It's not just the the video, but it's still stunning. Designed by R Moon. Apparently used to work at Nuxt. Design freelancer. Huge credit to R Moon, because that is stunning. Always let these designers know when they're killing it. They deserve it. I got nothing else. Until next time, peace nerds.